Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda is the mastery of yoga. The cessation of the fluctuation of the mind, in a nutshell. I first started with my dad when I was 10. He took me to some classes. And then when I left school, I was cycling past the Lido in Brixton one day and I saw a sign saying yoga. And I thought, yeah, let me try that again. The first class just completely blew me away, really. At the end, I was doing a relaxation. She was saying to relax your body. And then she got to the hands and she said, uh, relax your hands. And I realized that my hands have been, I've been lying, thinking I was relaxed, but my hands were actually like really tight. And I went, Phew. And that just hooked me basically. Like, I realised how tense I'd been. I came out and all the colours and the sounds and the world had just got turned way up and everything was just seemed brighter and I felt a lot happier. I was at Glastonbury Festival and I took mushrooms. You know, it was the first time I'd ever had an experience of being watched by something. God, universe all different names people give it, sending just unconditional love to me. So that was, <laughs> was like a really clear moment in my life. And then the next day I could see like my ego, my mind, and my thoughts were like in front of the real truth. I said, okay, the plants can show you what's available, what is at the top of the mountain. Then everything I'd learned already about meditation and yoga, this is the step-by-step -step path to be able to climb the mountain. Growing up in a cosmopolitan environment, I like to incorporate many different approaches into my way to heal and evolve and meditate. My art is something I've done my whole life and I didn't know what I was doing. I was just churning out these drawings and these pictures and these paintings. Through the shamanic ceremonies that I did, I realised what I've been doing. And it's that I've been painting what the third eye sees the whole time, but not what we experience as our normal reality. There's basically so much information streaming in through our senses and then the unconscious mind selects what it thinks is important, what's relevant, and then projects that as our experience of reality. In the psychedelic experience or the, the meditation experience, the filters can be removed and then you can experience much more of the information, potentially all of the information. When I'm painting, it's a way to have a psychedelic vision but without being on a psychedelic plant. to get these deeper visions of the time now, the most fertile area for spiritual evolution actually being right in the middle of the chaos. I had this big awakening, these universal messages saying, go to Brixton, go to the front line. That's the place to teach yoga. That's the place where the real evolution will happen. Yoga essentially is like thousands of years old from the Himalayas and it's an ocean of knowledge. The challenge we've got now is to apply it into modern day setting. So Brixton in 2016 is so different from the Himalayas in 3000 BC, you know? So it's that how to live the, the truth of that way, of that lifestyle, in a modern urban environment. Yoga makes me feel ultimately bliss. When I really put my whole spirit into it, I get a feeling of, of peace and calm, oneness, awareness. It can make you feel all things, it's a journey really. So, <laughs> some point it make you feel like, really painful, like if you're purifying, if I'm applying attention to an area that needs to be changed, it's the most excruciating pain that I can deal with. But that's the ground for the evolution, that's where the change happens in that, in that field, <laughs> pain. Hey.
I've been doing just yoga for about eight years or something and I haven't done any weight training. A couple of years ago, I was cycling up to town and I just saw this church and it's pouring down with the rain and I thought, oh, you know what, let me just go in and meditate, say a prayer for a little bit and get some shelter. So I walk in and there's four massive blokes uh, sparring and doing pads. Like, the guy's saying, yeah, you wanna have a go? And then, so like 10 minutes later, I'm sparring with this guy, I didn't know at the time, but four time world champion, black belt, jujitsu master. I just got really into it. I really loved going because it was so different from the yoga. At the same time, I found a block workout at the Brixton Street Gym and got really into my weight training. It was the way to ground myself, practice like the urban avatar and you know, be tough as well because the front line is hard. The idea of an urban avatar and the practice is to live in an enlightened way, in an aware way, in an awakened way in the city, in a modern urban environment. An avatar is your physical vehicle in a realm. Like when you play a computer game, you can take control of an avatar and you control the avatar in, in that dimension, in the, in the game. So for me, my spiritual realization is that I'm having an experience now as a human, but there's, a, there's an eternal truth of what I am, of what we all are as a spirit that existed before and will carry on after this physical body. And this physical body is the vehicle for navigating around this world, this human realm. So the avatar is your body and all the things that you apply to it are your characteristics, it's your story that you're writing. From helping other people, I get joy. In a way, I get their joy. I get a feeling of their good feeling because I know what it's like to have felt bad or weak or whatever and then people have helped me to feel stronger in myself and when I help someone else do that I can get a feeling of the good feeling that they get as well like a smile or a laughter and you know that that's someone who's going to go out and be you know good for their family as well and you know, like a ripple effect like this serve the world like that. It's about living in that same connection, that same awareness with nature, but right in the middle of the concrete jungle.